I have young people, artists come to me, or not only young, but all ages, and they'll say, well, I used to paint realistically, but I got to the bottom of it, and that's why I turned to ab abstraction. And I often think to myself, yes, they got to the bottom of their own depth of character, but not to the subject. Andrew was the youngest of five children of illustrator and artist N.C. Wyatt and his wife Caroline. He was born on July 12, 1917 in Chadsworth, Pennsylvania. His father, known as N.C. or Pa to his family, was an award-winning artist. He was sought after for his detailed picture book illustrations that brought history to life. His works had readers spellbound. He was so successful as an artist that he was able to build a lavish family home fit with the studio behind it and pay for 18 acres at the single commission of work. This book was called Treasure Island. Andy's childhood was exciting and fun, but also dogged with poor health, reoccurring chest infections, and a problem with his hip, which affected him throughout his life. This didn't phase his energy or questionative nature in the slightest. Because of his poor health, his father thought that it would be in his best interest to be taken out of public school and instead be tutored from home. He was set free to roam around his father's studio and encouraged to take frequent breaks to play in nature. His favorite activity as a child was running around the house with his father's fighting props. During Andy's teenage years, the main things that he would watercolor were the lands and waters around him. His first one-man show at the Macbeth Gallery sold out immediately. This was incredible for a 20-year-old. As an exercise, his father N.C. had him draw daily the human skeleton from as many points as possible. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Just let it fall, let it fall in there, let it fall in there. Or she'll get it everywhere. Take two.
I, I'm gonna guess you can put wire through. Andrew Wyeth began working at their Kerner farm in Chatsford, Pennsylvania. The nearby property, owned by German immigrants Carl and Anna Kerner, was a major theme in Andrew's work for the rest of his life. When asked, what is Kerner's farm as a physical entity, he said, It must be 150 or 200 acres. It is quite a big farm and it has many faucets to it. There's a house with its multiple sections, the woodshed, the pond, the entrance door, the pines, the porch, and the windows. But more important than its individual parts to me is the fact that it's a place that I can walk over climb over without feeling out of place or absurd. Carl lets me wander all over the house and paint in any room. I have the key to the house and I can come and go as I, as I please. He doesn't think of me as particularly important. I don't think he even thinks of me as being around half the time. So I don't exist as a person. That's important for my creative process. Wyatt spent nearly one year on this piece. With him painting multiple things at their Kerner farm, People started to ask, why not have a change of scenery? He said, in painting, the whole process is different. You can look at the same object in all times of the day. A change of subject is really very unimportant to me because there are always new revelations coming out about that one subject. I spent almost a year on the tempera snow flurries because I was fascinated by the motion of the clouds, shadows on the hill near Kerner's farm and by what that hill meant to me. I've walked that hill a hundred times, a thousand times, ever since I was a small child, so it was a deathless as far as I was concerned. I could probably just paint a hill for the rest of my life, actually. The brown Swiss is indeed a real portrait to me. It was like doing a person's face. It was so complex. It was like a double portrait because the reflection of the house and the pond, I'm looking at it one way but then I'm looking at it in another. If you look closely at Brown Swiss, you'll see many, many fine details. For instance, the tin pan sitting there on the porch, and if you look up in the windows, you'll see the ceilings of the attic roof, where there are those strange hooks on which the kerners hung, slip covers, sheets, sausages, and onions, and these hooks are even reflected in the pond. In the tin cup on the left side of the picture, there is some of the best temper painting I've ever done. The cup is almost transparent against the wall, except for the little glint on the lid and on the spigot. The way the bubbles come off from where the water hits makes constant movement. I drunk that water many times. It is the most delicious fresh water, and it's going right to this day. The way it comes over the ledge of the great trough and runs down the side is amazing. There is a strange, transparent quality when it overflows. Great cascades or small trickles, all at the same time. Some very thin, some not. It's a life itself, endlessly moving, making sounds. There are very few studies for evening at Kerner's, because that year Carl had been very ill, and many evenings I saw the light burning there quite late. I had a strange foreboding that this might be the end. That was the real reason for this painting. I had gone over there evening after evening. I'd heard that water, and I'd seen the light up there in the house, and I'd lie in bed at night thinking about the strange phenomenon and thinking about the square house sitting in the valley. So I, it wasn't the fact that I was struck by a beautiful evening, say, in the very early spring with branches against the sky. I tried to get that feeling, but there's something else deeply emotional here. In 1977, when art historian Robert Rosenblum was asked to identify the most overrated and the most underrated artist of the 20th century, he gave one name for both, Andrew Wyeth. Andrew Wyeth's watercolor technique is similar to my own artistic technique all the time. Sketchy. It was his way of getting down an idea quickly. He said this about watercolors. The only virtue to a watercolor is to put down an idea very quickly without too much thought about what you feel at the moment. In some senses, it is similar to drawing, but drawing in all aspects of color. With watercolor, you can pick up the atmosphere, the temperature, the sound of snow sifting through the trees or over the ice of a small pond or against a window pane. Watercolor perfectly expresses the free side of my nature. Christina's World is Andrew Wyeth's most famous painting, created in 1948. Just like his artwork being influenced by two families, 
Andrew Wyeth had two distinct painting types, watercolor and egg tempera. Andrew Wyeth's second painting technique was dry brushing in egg tempera. This is obviously where he made his paint homemade using egg and pigment. Kind of gross, but it worked. Not only did he make his own egg tempera paint, which was very long lasting, he created his own technique for using it. He did his dry brush temper paintings over a wash, which gave his paintings better texture. This is how he describes his technique. I work in dry brush when my emotions get deep enough into a subject. So I paint with a smaller brush, dip it into color, splay out the brush and bristles, squeeze out a good deal of the moisture and color with my finger so that there is only a very small amount of paint left. Then when I stroke the paper with the dried brush, it will make various distinct strokes at once and I start to develop the forms of whatever object it is until they start to have a real body. But if you want to have it come to life underneath, you must have an exciting undertone of wash. Otherwise, if you just work dry brush over a white surface, it will look too much like dry brush. A good dry brush to me is done over a very wet technique of washes. Dry brush is layer upon layer. It is what I would call a definite weaving process. You weave the layers of dry brush over and within the broad washes of watercolor. Sometimes, Andrew Wyeth would erase or paint over a painting he had already started because he believed it better expressed the inner spirit of the erased or what he called the underpainted image. So paintings would layer up on top of each other to find what he found the perfect match to be. This is something that we could use when we cover up our own mistakes in painting. He just did it better. Andrew's work was all about speed and interest in his subject matter. He wanted the viewer to come alive to the subject and sense the completeness of all sides of the subject. He wanted involvement in the subject matter by both the viewer and himself. For example, when he did still lives of people, he would work for hours, and then he would get more work done in a 15 minute break he gave for the subject to rest, because the natural resting poses had more fluidity and action. Andrew then had to work fast to capture the moment, but it gave him mental pictures to work from. Often, he would paint the same thing multiple times to find new revelations about a subject each time. Andrew Wyeth's own interest in the piece often determined if he actually completed it. Often, he would rush to put down a single line and then leave it for a day. He then would come back and decide if it excited him enough to continue with it the next day. He painted for himself and not for others. He believed that if a painting had quality, it would find a way to preserve itself. It's easy to see how Christina's Wardle is Andrew Wyeth's most famous piece, as it exemplifies all of his techniques and style. In it, viewers can see the subject matter of Anna Christina Olsen staring into the distance, looking out at her farmhouse in Cushing, Maine. Anna Christina suffered from a degenerative muscular disease called polio, which made her unable to walk. Wyeth said that she was limited physically, but by no means spiritually and that the challenge was to do justice to her extraordinary conquest of a life which most people would consider hopeless. Her slight and skinny frame makes her seem vulnerable and isolated in the large field that she's looking out on, and the viewer is in an, in an ambiguous position where you can see from behind her to see what she sees. The scene contains a sense of vulnerability because of this, which contributes to a certain foreboding feeling. Christina's World is a great example of Andrew Wyeth's artistic style, known as Magic Realism. Magic Realism has meticulous attention to detail, but often has skewed vantage points or perspective, making the subject seem uncanny or strange. For example, Christina's left hand is enlarged, possibly to emphasize the strength and pressure she is putting on it. Wyeth's dry brush technique creates the effect of a stillness or an almost surreal atmosphere for the subject. Andrew had a big focus on detail within his work, seen in the individual strands of hair and each and every blade of grass. Andrew Wyeth did not follow the expressionist trend of his time, instead was able to create his own technique and way of art that influenced others way past him, earning him the title of painter of the people.